Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. When was the last time you bought a car? Do you know which is the highest selling model in 2023? Did you know one of India's largest auto manufacturers recently completed 10 years of partnership with another global player? Join us this Saturday where we talk about the recent trends and developments in the auto sector. Friends, in this video, I'm going to talk to you on the topic, the problems of the advisor. Generally, if you go to a doctor or you visit your lawyer or your chartered accountant, your demeanor towards them would be, this person is valuable to me and I need to maintain my rapport with him and get the best out of him. His inputs are very important to me. Rarely have I seen clients go to these professionals with the mindset, I am paying you, so you jolly well do what I ask you to do or it's your duty to please me. But that's not the case with the financial advisory community. That's not how investors generally behave with advisors. Why is this? I believe this has got to do with the legacy mindset of dealing with other sales oriented intermediaries. The investor is still not out of that mindset. He still sees an advisor as a salesman when the advisor is anything but that. And because he sees the advisor as a salesman, he continues to treat him like he would treat a salesman. This was one of the reasons I decided that I don't want to give advice to anyone even if he is going to pay me five times the fee which he normally would. It's not worth dealing with people who don't even know the value of what they are getting. In this, the investor has not even appreciated the architecture or framework of regulation that has been created for advisory. This is the second issue. The first issue is he is still having a mindset of a salesman or a he is still having a mental image of a salesman when he is dealing with the advisor. The second is the investor does not respect the regulatory framework that has been created keeping him in mind. Let me explain. If there is an individual advisor, an RIA as we choose to call him. He can have only 150 clients. So there is a ceiling. If an advisor can have only 150 clients, then these 150 clients should contribute enough revenue for him so that he runs his professional practice comfortably. Nobody thinks about that. Everybody wants to value his work at the lowest level where the per hour wage is below that of a plumber or a carpenter. It cannot be so. Nobody including those who drafted this regulation have thought about how the advisor's viability should be established. If you want a professional practice to establish, if you want 1 lakh advisors as we ambitiously target, then it is our primary duty to understand what is the per hour value of work for an advisor. An advisor's time is his cost and that is his wage. Both. Unless you are able to price your time correctly, an advisor would never be able to survive. Forget about doing well. This is something which the investor and regulation should equally respect. The investor does not even think about how many clients an advisor is handling, what would be his revenue. He is only interested in not paying enough. That is his obsession. What is the excuse he gives for that? He says that I used to pay so much. That was wrong. But this is worse. It is wrong with another degree added to it. It is a square wrong. But nobody cares. Everybody thinks that somebody should give him extraordinary advice at a cost which is next to nothing. 
Then there is this question of how much time and effort an advisor should put. Simply because you pay, it doesn't mean that he would work for you again and again. Because you are paid for one visitation or one consultation. You don't go to the doctor and say that I paid you six months back 200 rupees per consultation or 500 per consultation. So give me a free prescription. But this happens all the time with advisors. The irony is that even if an advisor is willing to give this free prescription to his client, he has to bear the cost of all the regulatory compliance. He has to give the advice in writing, he has to have a record keeping, he has to have so many things. That's the second part where nobody is respecting the time value of the advisor. Now to the third and more important issue. If you visited your doctor, you don't leave that place before paying him. But we have completely digitized advice and service rendering by advisors where everything goes on the phone or it goes on an email, documented. And then the advice is executed by the client on his own. He has even earned his money. But the advisor has to follow up for payment multiple times. More importantly, once he has raised the invoice, he has to pay the GST on that invoice even without recovering any of the money. And there are people who don't pay. Now, if an advisor makes a mistake, then there is a system to help the investor. But when investors make mistakes in their fiduciary duties and paying the advisor is the primary duty of an investor after he has received the advice, there is no safeguard for the advisor. He is out all by himself. Now contrast the security which a distributor or a salesman gets. It's higher. So the system is telling you that we respect people differentially, we are not treating them equally and we expect the advisor to deliver a far superior service with far higher compliance and yet be exposed to the prospect of many clients not paying him enough or not paying him at all. This is how the system works and after all this, society has so much of angst against the advisory community. What is their wrong? I think they have committed no wrong. They are the warriors who are trying to build a new ecosystem for you. But you are not respecting any of that. This is why we are seeing a lot of experienced people surrender their licenses. We are seeing people who are extremely reputed giving up their RAA licenses and moving out. This is why People who came with dreams of establishing a professional practice of high standards like you have in the West, simply giving up. And yet, our society is not willing to see why it's happening, is not willing to see the truth when it's right before them, is not willing to read the writing on the wall, which is there because of society, not because of the advisors. And everybody still thinks there should be something wrong in the mindset of the advisor. If you don't get your salary for three months, can you survive? There are people who don't pay advisors. The sundry debtors of an advisor will easily be more than 10%. It will be even higher than 20%. And on the 20%, he would have paid GST. Why would somebody want to work for society risking so much? Is it such a great lucrative profession that you should sacrifice your peace of mind so much after delivering a solution to people with absolute commitment, integrity and interest alignment? It's time for us to think. It's time for us to be fair and it's time for us to be objective. If not, we will not get good advices and if you don't get or find good advices, you're not going to find the best advice. That's for sure. Thank you for watching this video.